What's going on, y'all? And welcome back to the A-Rate Show. Man, if you guys haven't heard yet, Bitcoin reached an all-time high of over $23,000. And that's insane. This monster has been growing so fastly and so consistently over the last few years that it's just insane. It's hard to fathom that this is even possible. $23,000 per coin. That's insane to me. And in this video, I'm going to talk about why I'm going to start investing more into Bitcoin and why you should as well. So stay tuned. So before we get into the reasons why you should invest into Bitcoin and my personal strategy for investing into Bitcoin, let me just tell you guys something real quick. Bitcoin is very highly volatile and it's very, very risky. Anything can happen with Bitcoin. And I literally mean anything. If you look at the end of 2018, you saw that it shot all the way up to 19,000. And then the following months, it went all the way down to 3,000. So if you're a very safe investor that doesn't want to deal with any kinds of risks or anything crazy, or if you're just not built like that, don't worry about investing into Bitcoin. There's plenty of other stocks and other asset classes that you can invest in that are a lot more safe than Bitcoin. So with that, let's get right into the reasons why you should invest into Bitcoin. The first reason is big banks and other financial institutions are not only accepting Bitcoin, but they're also starting to invest into cryptocurrencies in general. For example, JP Morgan out here is now rolling out their own bank-backed cryptocurrency, which is insane to think. So the reason that's significant is because banks not only make money from interest and from fees, but they also make money from other asset classes. For example, real estate or from buying gold and letting it appreciate and then eventually selling it for profits. So this kind of shows me that JP Morgan, for example, sees some potential in cryptocurrencies as a way to make some money as an asset class, for example. So as an investor, I kind of see this trend that's starting to form. There's tons of apps out there like Coinbase, Cash App. Even Venmo, I think, is working on a solution to add cryptocurrencies in their platform. So it kind of shows me that there's a trend that's starting to form with cryptocurrencies that people are able to profit and make money. And who knows, maybe one day it'll be super easy. It already is really easy to trade Bitcoin and to send Bitcoin. But one day it might become a legit currency as well. Or it might be something that's part of society as a trend in general. And on top of that, it's not only banks that are investing into Bitcoin and buying Bitcoin and accepting Bitcoin. There's other companies out there such as Square that bought $50 million in Bitcoin and invest into that. And as an investor, if all these banks and financial institutions and these big name companies are buying up Bitcoin, it gives me a certain confidence, a level of confidence that I know that all these companies are buying Bitcoin. That means that Bitcoin has a potential in their future. It's going to be something very big in the future that I can either profit off of or something that's going to become very relevant in the future. And speaking of all these companies buying up Bitcoin, that leads me to my next reason why investing to Bitcoin should be a thing. And that next point is about Bitcoin scarcity and its limitation. So if you take a look at this article by Investopedia, there's only 21 million Bitcoins that can be mined in total. And with that being said, there's currently 18.5 million Bitcoin that have been mined currently. So that means that there's less than 3 million Bitcoins that can possibly be mined and put into circulation. So we're pretty much at the back end of Bitcoin being able to be mined. So there's only a few left, which means that over time, these big institutions and other retail buyers will keep buying up all the Bitcoin that's left. And then eventually, because there's only 3 million left and there's already 18.5 million in circulation, that limitation and the scarcity of Bitcoin is just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. With these big financial institutions buying Bitcoin and hoarding it, I think that's another reason that will contribute to the price of Bitcoin skyrocketing. So it's scarcity and because of these big investors just taking and hoarding all the Bitcoin that they have, it just makes acquiring Bitcoin and buying Bitcoin once the supplies run out to be pretty hard, which makes me personally think that the price of Bitcoin will probably skyrocket through the next few years. With that being said, if you can't beat them, join them. And that's something I'm going to personally be doing is just investing into Bitcoin, buying as much as I can and hoarding it and letting that price appreciate over time. And if you take a look, I didn't really talk about this earlier, but every four years, the amount of Bitcoin that can be mined just keeps getting lower and lower. And this will happen until Bitcoin eventually runs out, which is kind of crazy to think about that this concept of Bitcoin can run out, but it is limited to 21 million. So if you take a look over the years from 2009 to 2012, that amount of Bitcoin that have been mined or that could possibly be mined. It just keeps going down and down and it keeps getting halved every time. So eventually, if you look at this trajectory, there's going to be a time where there's no more Bitcoin left. But at the same time, there's not going to be that much newly Bitcoin added to the circulation of things. So definitely a good time to buy right now. I mean, obviously, the best time to buy was probably back in March when it was 4000 and not 24000 right now. But 
you know what, it's best to start now and just start hoarding it up. And that's something I'm going to personally be doing. And another quick reason why investors are jumping into Bitcoin is because technically Bitcoin is a deflationary type of asset class, which just means that it fights against inflation, which is very important and significant because having deflationary type of assets in your portfolio help fight against inflation so that the value of your money doesn't decrease over time. For example, that's why people invest into bonds or even dividend stocks, for example. And Bitcoin kind of has that value because if you take a look at the trajectory of Bitcoin and how much are being released into circulation, that number is going down and down every single time. So, of course, Bitcoin is still very risky. It's a more riskier way to be safe. That makes any more sense. That probably didn't make that much sense to y'all, but let me just try to show you guys in a different way. So. $1,000 in 1950 is worth almost $11,000 today. But the only reason it would reach $11,000 is because of the way it's invested. So for example, if you just kept $1,000 in a safe for how many every year? So that's 70 years, right? That would still be $1,000, right? But if you had invested it, you would fight against inflation. And on top of that, your money would be working for you. So that thousand would probably be worth way more than 11,000. But it's very similar to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is in the opposite way. It's a deflation. So it's kind of fighting against this inflation. So if that makes a little bit more sense, let me know. If not, I can try reaching out to you. Hit me up with an email or whatever. And I'll try to explain a little bit better. Okay, so now let's take a look at the price target. So this is insane. Guggenheim Partners CIO says that Bitcoin may go to $400,000. That's insane. But if you think about it, I mean, $23,000 for a cryptocurrency in the first place is insane too. Do I personally think this is going to happen? Honestly, like not really. But I mean, anything's really possible with cryptocurrency. And the way things are headed, I can definitely see it happening. Just because it's becoming such a social trend Everyone's talking about cryptocurrency. This wasn't a thing back in the day. So I said back in the day, but like maybe five or 10 years ago, you know what I mean? But either way, like Bitcoin is just following all these social trends. And with that 400,000 price target, that makes it very appealing to me as a retail investor to kind of just get my feet wet. And I'll talk about a little bit later in the video, my strategy for investing into Bitcoin. But the price target is just insane. And it's not just Guggenheim and all these other CIOs. They're other retail investors, there's big name YouTubers who are obviously financial advisors, but there's people all around the world that are just are looking at Bitcoin and saying it has so much potential. And long story short, the reason why they have a 400,000 price target is pretty much the same reasons I mentioned before, and that's just because of its scarcity and the inflation of the dollar. So, I mean, yeah, the 400,000 dollar price target is very exciting but the reason why it's exciting to me and i keep saying this over and over again is because these other financial institutions and big banks and big investors are all turning their head and looking at bitcoin some of them are investing into it and some of them are just turning their head and monitoring it so as an investor looking at these trends it kind of excites me to see the long-term potential of bitcoin and this last reason is really crazy and interesting. And honestly, I don't believe in it personally, but it's a cool thing to speculate about. And a lot of people have been speculating about it. And that's that the government will one day get rid of cash and we'll go from cash to cryptocurrency. And that will be our currency of our country and possibly even the world. And the reason why that's very possible is because, I mean, we went from gold to cash and then who knows, maybe we'll go from cash to cryptocurrency. And the reason why it's very good for the government and why they're very incentivized to do it is because they're able to track every single purchase and every single time you receive some bitcoin and that's just insane so like if you were doing something illegal i mean they'll be able to track it and then you go to jail or whatever or on top of that they're able to detect when you have to pay taxes and a lot of people get around taxes which is like technically illegal but for example if they were to sell a lot of stuff in person technically they're supposed to report that to the irs but if you have to do it now through bitcoin then there's no way that you can do that without the government knowing what you're spending and what, what you're receiving. And then you have to report that. So it's very good for the government to know that and to be able to track every single thing. Obviously, like, I mean, it's very scary to, for that to happen, but it's definitely in the realm of possibility. And this is all speculation, but it would definitely be interesting. That would make it a good reason to invest into Bitcoin is just because, I mean, like if it's going to become the currency of the world, it's good to get a head start right now. All right, so let's talk about my strategy and my personal goal for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. My personal goal is to get about 2 to 5%. I'm shooting for 5% depending on the future of Bitcoin. I got to do a little bit more research. For those of you guys that know me, and thank you guys for watching all my videos, by the way, I'm a dividend growth investor for the main part. I mean, I do do some growth investing here and there. I do day trading. I'm not really good at it. And I, I like to diversify. So I like to have some cryptocurrency. So 2 to 5% is something that I'm shooting for. 
but I got to do a little bit more research. So this is my portfolio so far in Coinbase Pro. I've got $70. So this is like less than 1% of my portfolio. I'm probably going to be dollar cost averaging into cryptocurrency, mostly and mainly just Bitcoin. I mean, I like Dogecoin, but that's a meme coin, let's be honest. But other than that, yeah, I definitely get more into Bitcoin. I'm probably going to be doing maybe $10 a week into Bitcoin. I'll be dollar cost averaging into it. So that's my personal goal. And for those of you that want to get into cryptocurrency or buying Bitcoin in general, I recommend using Coinbase Pro. It's super easy to use. I've been using it for the past two, three days, and it's just really easy to use. And it has very low fees at 0.1%. Unfortunately, there are fees attached to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin for the most part. But if you compare it to some of its competitors, those are at 2-3%. 0.1% isn't so bad at all if you look at that and compare it to some of its competitors. And another reason I really like Coinbase Pro is you can send Bitcoin from person to person or from wallet to wallet super easily. And you can do that. You can't do that on Robinhood. For example, on Robinhood, if you want to take out your money, you're going to have to sell for profits. And then you can do it. And then you have to pay taxes on that, which is kind of annoying to do. On Coinbase Pro, you don't really have to worry about that if you just want to send it from wallet to wallet. So that's one reason why I like it. As a dividend growth investor, this is something that's very new to me. So I'm still doing research on it. I'm still learning about it. So I will definitely make a future video on crypto in general and about Coinbase Pro and all of the different exchanges. So if you guys want to see that, leave a comment. Let me know. So with that, that's pretty much all I have for you guys for today. That was pretty fun making that Bitcoin video. Honestly, it's something that I'm definitely going to be looking into for the future. Leave a comment if you guys are interested to see more Bitcoin videos or videos on cryptocurrency in general or about their platforms or exchanges that you can trade it on. Just let me know in the comments below. And with that, I appreciate you guys for watching and listening. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoy this content and stay notified if you want to see more. And with that, guys, remember, everybody eats.